It's Mr. Christopher with the Funkatopia radio show and the Funked Up app. Glad you guys could join us. And we are live with Juan Elliott. How you doing, buddy? Good, bro. How you, man? And, and uh, we are going to be talking a little bit about uh, MPG, maybe swapping some really cool Prince stories. We're going to be playing some tracks off of your new album. And, uh, man, I, just for those of you uh, who who don't know Duan, he used to uh, sing with MPG. He was with Prince for how, how long were you with him? Oh, my God, a few years from like 2000 to 2006, 8, yeah. Then yes. after that, off and on, you know. And so you you did that for a while, but you came from uh, you came from a, a gospel background. So tell us a little bit about your your background and and how you know the the progression from where you started to getting to that point where you're actually doing background vocals for for Prince of all people. Oh man, that was uh, very interesting. It's just like um, it started out uh, me and my brothers singing. Um, back up, not sorry, singing gospel with my parents, um, the Beard family out of um, High Bluff, Arkansas. Um, we got our start with them. We started singing um, in talent shows, and they saw that we were very serious about it because we kept winning grand prizes, and we were just, like, driven when it came to it. We were very passionate about it. So they figured it. My, my grandmother was like, well, let's get them out of the um, talent shows and put them on a roll with us. So we got a crash course and, you know, performance and all of that good stuff, you know, so we sang with our parents, which was my, my grandmother, my mom, my aunts, and my uncles, family band, so you know how it works, you know, the whole Jackson Fox thing, <laughs> and the, uh, the, the Staple family, that whole a lot of thing. People, a lot of people get started that way. <laughs> yeah, so we, uh, yeah, toured the country um, with my parents, my folks, um, singing gospel, um, and that's how we got our chops, singing, uh, and, um, like um, touring with such bands as the, um, the Williams Brothers, um, um, the Texas Boys, the um, yeah, just the Cat Spirituals, the Mighty Clouds of Joy. So we we're touring with all these guys, and you know, and just getting that thorough schooling of what it is to perform. And so that's how we got our start, you know, for sure. And, and, so and we so, ended up from there. Okay. Um, <laughs> Good. Uh, tra- moving from there to um, leaving our parents moving from Arkansas to Houston, Texas, which is where we started singing R&B. But I'm going to take you back a quick second. Morris Hayes, I know you know him. Yep. Morris Hayes <laughs> is um, from Arkansas, too. He um, grew up with my mom and my uncles and stuff like that. So he lived in Happy Home. He lived in Pine Bluff. Everyone knew each other. They knew Morris. I mean, it was just like a big family, you know. So um, yeah, Morris ended up vamping out way before we did. And of course, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with his career and what happened. So, yep. um, <clears throat> we ended up leaving Arkansas, moving to Houston, Texas. Um, Morris caught word that we had left. Um, so, we all kind of reconnected while we were in Texas. He was in Minnesota, um, found out what we were doing until we were singing R.I.B. He was really shocked because he couldn't believe it because he knows my folks and how very strict they were when it came to, you know, religious music. You know, so mere fact that we were singing R and B was like, okay, cool, we gotta figure this out. Let's let's see what's going on. So um, we ended up recording a CD, um, sent it off to him, overnighted it to him, and we as soon as he got it, he called us like immediately and was like, Okay, so who does what? And after that he was like, Okay, let's get you guys here. So they had a few months off of um touring with Prince. So we were gonna shop, we were gonna we Ended up flying to Minnesota, living with Morris in his recording studio in Minneapolis. Um, about to start recording our CD, so we were getting ready to shop that out to major labels because we were looking for a label deal, you know. So no intentions of getting with Prince, you know. But um, fast forward, time was cut short. Of course, it's Prince. So. Um, Morris, instead of like having six months off, a few months off, he had to go back to Paisley Park to start rehearsals for the next tour, which cut into us recording our album. So he was just like, come on, guys, let's go with me out to Paisley Park, we'll hang out, you guys get to meet the man. Um, cool. So we went out to Paisley Park, um, started 
started shooting basketball. I'm making a long story short here because <laughs> I know I have a... <laughs> no, because I mean th- those type. I mean, you don't have to worry about making it short because I mean these are types of things, especially you know post his passing. You know, people want to hear these stories. People are really starving to kind of hear some hear some stories about, you know, personal things that, you know, have occurred. And, and yeah, feel free to expand as much as you want. Okay, okay, cool. So, um, we get to Paisley Park. Um, we didn't see him right away. We ended up um, on his basketball court in the little soundstage room. Not the big one, but the smaller soundstage where he mm-hmm. threw all his parties. Um had a basketball ball in there, and me and Johnny was just shooting basketball, whatnots, and um, 30 minutes to an hour later, here comes Prince walking in, and um, looks over his and shook our hands and told him it was nice to meet us. We was like, nice to meet you. Um, he's like, make sure you guys come out and hang out with us in the uh, rehearsal room while we jam out, you know, just have a little fun, just come, you know, hang out with this you know, so when you're done, he was like, okay, cool. So me and my older brother being very competitive, like we always have been with each other. <laughs> we got into the game. So we were just <laughs> shooting, just shooting it and almost breaking sweats. You know, like we was just really trying to, we were going at it. And he comes walking back in like 45 minutes later and was like, are you guys going to come see us? Hang out with us? And we was like, oh yeah, that's right. Cool. So, threw the ball down. We all followed him <laughs> back to the little rehearsal room. Yeah, and there we were with Morris Hayes, um, Mike Scott, um, Larry Graham. I love the uh, guys. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, uh, Mike Scott, Kirk. Kirk was on the drums, playing drums. Um, yeah, a couple of the people. Yeah, so we went back there, sat in chairs, and we started back up jamming. Everything's cool. We're, like, sitting there bobbing. Bobby and I was just looking around. So what's looking what what's pl- what's playing on the on the soundboard at this point? What's playing on the soundboard? Uh, we were they were rehearsing for I think it was Free. You remember the um, Graham Central Station song called Free? Yep. Yeah, they were rehearsing that, and um, we're sitting there just chilling. And the next thing you know, he's just he brings microphones up to us while we're sitting there in chairs. And of course, you know, me and my brothers, where we're from, we're not trying to turn down a microphone ever. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, so so um, they're just jamming and he's just, we're just improv So we got up to the microphone stands, walked up to him and started improv And he was just like, whoa, okay, this is really cool. And it's there, oh, everybody just still jamming, doing their thing. And um, after we, everything went to another level. We just started having even more fun. So after that, um, he was like, um, you guys are hired. And we're like, oh, okay. Cool. Hired to what? <laughs> to sing backup vocals. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, sure did. So we came in the next day, and there, sure enough, our chairs were there um, with his towels laid over the top with his little logo on it. And, we, yeah, we were like official, I guess you could say. You know? Wow. But that's yeah, how it got started. Yeah, it's a... That's a that's a pretty pretty cool journey. Yeah, not many people would ever turn down a job offer from Prince, regardless of whatever it is. I think the only time I ever heard anybody turn down a job offer from Prince, well, twice actually, and that's when uh, Prince had sent Purple Rain over to Stevie Nicks and said, "Can you help me write lyrics for this? Because I I just want to do something with it." Whoa. And Stevie said, "I I." She listened to it and she just said, "I, I just can't. I can't. It's just too much. It's." Is too emotional. I I just can't do anything with it. So that was the first time, and the right. second time I heard was uh, when Dr. Funkenberry refused to run his website for him when he asked him to, for whatever well, reason. I think it was a monetary situation or whatever. But yeah. so that's the only two times I ever heard somebody turn down Prince in a, for a job offer. Right, but right. so you know you hear about these long um, music sessions that happen with Prince, where mm-hmm. he goes in and literally will be playing the same song for o- over an hour. Yes. And it's just like a continuous thing and just trying to just find different types of melodies and f- find different elements that kind of work in. Is that pretty consistent with what you experienced? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I'm thankful for our background and where we came from with um, quartet gospel, which a lot of people um, 
when they hear about gospel on the mainstream today, they don't really hear about um, quartet gospel, which is where me and my brothers came from. But that whole art form of quartet gospel is all about improv improvisation. So when you get on stage, you never know what you're going to get. So that's how we were raised, you know. So with him being like that, you just like you said, he, it was perfect for us. It was like a, the perfect marriage for us to be with him because being that he just didn't go by a script, it was perfect, you know. But yeah, that was the norm. For him. It's just it wasn't like him trying something. I mean, this dude would literally make up like songs right there on on stage, and you literally could be at a show, you could be at a concert or at a party, and he's like on stage just improving, and before you know it, he's got like a, a complete song made right there in front of you. He just made it like right there in front of you. So yep. he was insane like that. Yeah. yeah, we hear a lot of stories like that. You know, we, we had just got done doing The Prince beginning to end where we played all of his material in chronological order, and it takes almost four days to do that. And this doesn't even, con you're, you're not even considering all the stuff that's in the can. And we, we've heard, you know, we've heard about these these full-blown albums that are, uh, that exist, um, work that he's done with Kendrick Lamar and work that he's done with, uh, Tamar and we're, I mean there's like all these things that are in the vault that n you, you have no idea what you're yeah. it's 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 really amazing which brings us to your new album uh, which mm -hmm. is New Age New Day it came out just a few months ago and um, had, did Prince get an opportunity to be able to hear any of this music that you no, created? No he did and I was like uh, he missed him dang it missed the boat I wish he would have because I'm pretty sure I had he heard it He'd have like you know, he'd have definitely sent it now. I would, would have actually been in contact for sure, because he loved us and we loved him. You know, we were like brothers, all four of us, me and my two brothers in Prince. We were like brothers, you know. But I, I hate he missed it. Yeah. yeah, I think a lot of people kind of feel like that. They do really have feel like a, a definitely a kinship with him. Every single time that you get him, you get him one on one on a personal level. You can you can actually you can feel that vibe with him for sure. So, he used the right word, uh, personable. He was very personable, and I right. love that about him. Like he, like he was very passionate about artists um, growing and growing, you know, within themselves to be something bigger than him. He was, he was a very personable person and very humble. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Well, let's go ahead and play a track from your new album. We'll actually play the title track. Uh, anything you want to say about this particular title track? Give me a little bit of the, the background on this particular song and and uh, a little bit of what it's about. I mean, just to kind um, of preempt it. Absolutely. Um, it was um, New Age New Day was definitely, it. I mean, like, um, coming out of the Purple Camp and going through just, I mean, transitioning from, from quartet gospel from my you know, my folks to transitioning into the purple camp and then uh, transitioning out of the purple camp and then transitioning into a whole new management situation with um, the whole, well, I won't talk about that, but transitioning out of that <laughs> right. to what I, got I am you. Now, which is a solo act, you know, um, it was, yeah, you get it. It was just a, it was a lot going on. Um, you tend to find yourself. Um, you realize you can do things when you think, you know, when the back is against the wall, you can, I mean, I'm looking at just, I'm, I'm just like really just shocked that I, I've actually created this EP. You know, it's like my first, my first solo offering and New Age of New Day is basically really what it is. The New Age of New Day, we're talking new management, new team, new supporters, a new Dewan, um, yeah, it's just a new everything. It's a brand new start. And like you know, taking it back just a little bit off of what we just talked about with Prince, I wish that he had gotten to see this, this version, experience this version of Dewan. You know, it would have been awesome. But well, yeah, so New Age, New Day, was, that's what it was about. Well, all that being said, let's play that track. You guys listen to a live interview with Duan Elliott, and this is the title track off of his new album, New Age, New Day, right here on Funked. Change 
up the scenery No one to hold me back from being me I gotta be the one to manifest destiny And show the world my life, my legacy No more excuses, tell me what are you waiting for I won't be sitting idle anymore So don't be calling me if you left me alone I'll show you I can make it on my own So all I can say is Whoa. track new age new day and uh you just heard it right here on funked up from the one and only duan elliott who is with us live how you feeling duan good how are you man doing good doing good Thanks uh, for yeah absolutely man why yeah. wouldn't we <laughs> <laughs> so that is the that is the new track off of uh your album who are some of the players on that track um i actually uh, produced everything um instrumentation wise um but i did have a couple of guys on my um one guy by the name of alan c he's a local artist here in atlanta um he did some some writing for me uh, and i had a a really good friend out of um san antonio texas by the name of to me to me music so um that's the the young lady that was actually singing with me on don't want to me so yeah we pretty much like just hand it out you know just I, i've always wanted to um, collaborate with some artists, right? You know, so always you come from a family that was very exclusive, you know. <laughs> you're on like, camera now; they can see where you're pointing. Yeah, ain't nobody here. <laughs> yeah, for for those of you who are tuning in on the uh, Funk Up app and listening, there will be a video that will follow later on today. You'll be able to actually see <laughs> Nuan. We're actually recording a video. And we'll actually incorporate uh, the videos from this as well. So you know, feel like if you you want to hear some things that he was talking about again, you, we, you'll, you'll get it. 
And of course, if you're watching it now, you're like, I'm watching this. I don't understand what you're talking about. Uh, so, yeah, we were talking a little bit about, you know, the music industry here in Atlanta and how, how it's, um, it's really non-existent. It's really Ooh. kind of, it's, I mean, the music is strong, but you have to be in it yeah. um, because it's not really part, it's not really integrated with society much. It's kind of, you know, the rock scene is dead here in Atlanta. Uh, you. But you, you, you have you have a hip hop scene uh, again, which you have to be integrated in. So, you know, you have to be you have to know where everything's happening and you have to, you know, same thing with the R&B scene. Um, and it's just the way that it is. Um, right. It's not really part of, um, you know, it's some of the things that Atlanta is famous for. But right. unfortunately, when you come to Atlanta, you expect to see all this music stuff and there's nothing here. There's nothing I mean, here, bro. It, I mean, I've had this discussion <laughs> with people for a long time, like uh, about here. Like, I'm, I'm, I've always been back and forth here, bro. It's like I could never catch on. Like, it's so strange. Like, imagine, bro, you live in Minnesota, mm-hmm. Minneapolis, Minnesota, bro. I, <laughs> I tell, I'll tell people that. Like, dude, like the worst local band in Minneapolis, Minnesota would clean almost anything out here because there's, I mean, it's all about music. It's just real music in Minneapolis, you know, so right. you know, it's, it's, it's so different here, man. It's well, so now, now it didn't always used to be that way back in the, uh, back in the eighties and the early nineties, there was a very, very strong, strong, um, music scene here in Atlanta. We had a lot of music festivals that would happen. A lot of local music festivals that kind of, you know, took things to the next level and made it really just kind of, I mean, it was, it was pretty amazing. It was very, very prevalent, and everywhere you turned, you could you could feel it, you could touch it. It was the vibe and everything. And then that just started to fade off. What well, happened? Well, what? It, it's it's just I think just a lot of the pieces, the marketing pieces that used to exist don't exist anymore. Um, you know, from just the periodicals and the death of newspapers and 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 all that. It's just you know, with everything moving moving online, it pretty much didn't matter where you were situated at if you if you had you had the ability to be able to get discovered, but you know, it, it's, um, I, I am, and I haven't really talked a lot publicly about this. I mean, I've talked with Tamar uh, about it quite a bit, but, um, I've actually started an organization called Atlanta music marketing. Uh, we've actually started establishing, um, a presence. I've established a presence online at Atlanta music And, uh, we're trying to change that, we're trying to change, just how music is is consumed, how um, the marketing of it, you know, because it, it's it was it's pretty amazing that even with some minimal marketing effort, you can make a huge huge difference. And there's just so many different avenues that uh, marketing avenues that are available right here in Atlanta. You have the AJC, you have things like Creative Loafing, and it's just you know, and and it's funny that you say it, you know. I, you know, it'd be nice to have Atlanta like the next Minneapolis where there's like this this hub of things that are happening. And, and you know, so I, I know you're probably experiencing that some of this with your new album, uh, mm-hmm. you know, as far as some of the marketing and getting the word out. And that's again, that's why Funkatopia is here is to make sure that people know about it. And, you know, it's it's great. Right. Yeah. So that's cool. But we um, yeah. So I did more talking than you did there. Maybe I'll have oh, to edit oh, that out. <laughs> I'm going to have to edit that out now. All right, that's perfectly okay. Um, so let's play another track off of your... Off of your uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about uh, Body Catcher? What, what's, give me a little bit of background on this song. <laughs> I don't know. I guess it was like a little... Um, paying a little homage to, to the purple one, I guess, but doing it in my own way, so to speak, you know? Like, I think a lot of people, uh, when, when they mention their influences, like... I know one thing for sure. Prince always wanted you to find your own sound. If that makes any sense, you know. Right. Like be funky, but find your own sound. So that's something that I've always been keen about, which is like doing me, like never mimicking someone else. Even though you know he is my one of my biggest mentors, but it reminded me of Prince. But I saw this really hot chick. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say anything. Um, <laughs> and just and it's just the way she moved, and it's just like just, just I was like, okay, let me get back home. And immediately, <laughs> I, was just, I, I was out, bro. I was just like, with this mid shit, just turned around, went home. <laughs> yeah. You can sense you know, trouble coming. You can sense you know, trouble coming. 
<laughs> I hear you. All right, well, let's check it out. The song is called Body Catcher. And again, it's off this brand new album called New Age, New Day. And you're hearing it right here. Has this been played anywhere else? I don't think it has, bro. I think you're the first guy to get it. All right, here we go. You're hearing it for the first time on Fucked Up. It's Body Catcher right here. Well, I'm fucked up. <laughs> okay, so you hot. And everybody knows it. Your body catcher, let me catch you. Body catcher, don't be shy, baby, let me catch you. Let me catch you. Body catcher, your body catcher, let me catch you. Body catcher, cause the way you're twisting and turning round makes me wanna act up and lay you down. Girl, you look so good, I just wanna grab you. Don't mean to be rude. You can tell by the way that I'm looking at you. That I'm into you Who you came with, girl, it don't even matter Who you leaving with Now that I got your attention, girl I'll be keeping it I want your body catcher Let me catch you Body catcher Don't be shy, baby, let me catch you Let me catch you Body catcher I want your body catcher Let me catch you Body catcher Cause the way you're twisting and turning round Makes me wanna act up and lay you down I can tell by the way that you pull me closer I never get enough Got some things we can do when the club is over That I know you love You got me so excited I just wanna hold you Baby, you're the one Now that I got your attention, yeah Girl, the night is young I want your body catcher Let me catch you Body catcher Don't be shy, baby, let me catch you Let me catch you Body catcher I want your body catcher Let me catch you Body catcher Cause the way you're twisting and turning round Makes me wanna act up and lay you down Now I know you have doubts, but girl, give me a chance Let me show you how a guy like me could be your man and I promise, baby girl, no doubt I'll make you my world So don't be shy, girl Please, baby, don't, don't be shy, girl Don't give me that solo Cause the way you're twisting and turning round Makes me wanna act up and lay you down I want your body catcher Let me catch you Body catcher Don't be shy, baby, let me catch you Let me catch you Body catcher I want your body catcher Let me catch you Body catcher Cause the way you're twisting and turning round Makes me wanna act up and lay you And that was Body Catcher from the new album, New Age, New Day, from Duwan Elliott, who was with us live. And let me tell you something, when you first came out on the, um, when you first came out and I, I started hearing about you, I was like, yeah, I'm definitely going to check out. I definitely want to hear any stories about NPG in those days. I definitely want to hear. But you have a really strong social media presence as far as, you know, your street team is concerned. Tell me a little about, you know, some of the people that you've got, you know, that are, that are there. Give them some shout outs. And, and oh uh, so, I mean, because I know you've got ton, tons of people, but there, I mean, there are some, some players out there for sure that have really got your back. Oh, yeah. My key players, man, Javon Angel out of D.C., um, Smooches out of D.C., um, Amita out of Tennessee. She's like the head of my um, Dewan Elliott. Um, Mark Street Team, she's amazing. Um, Vicky, Vicky Murray out of Pittsburgh. Um, those are, and Danielle Rosenthal, who's like in charge of my social media. Like us, like we're like, every, they're insane. I, I mean, they're relentless, dude. I, I, I appreciate you guys so much. You guys are amazing. Thanks for everything, guys. Well, I Again. know they, I know they appreciate it. And they do a killer job. I mean, because I mean, even from the minute that we were playing a track, on the radio station, it's it's like 
it, it, it's all over Twitter, it's on Facebook, and and uh, that's 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 strong, man. You got to have that marketing. That's what kind of we were talking about a little bit earlier. Is if you don't have that that level of marketing and that passion to to make sure to get the word out, yes. you know. See, a lot of people, what what you you have is that if you got people, and this happens in per, people's personal lives too. If you get if you have too many things going on then you, you're kind of spread thin. But it looks like, you know, but when you have a, a team that, that works as hard as your team does, man, that's, that'll work. I that'll love work. Amita, Vicky, Javon, Smooches, Danielle, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. But yeah, dude, they are awesome, bro. I love them. Awesome. They are passionate, just like I am. They're very passionate. We all share the same views. You know, we talk every day. Everybody's on the same page. It's amazing, bro. We're gonna take this all the way to the end. Yeah. Well, yeah, well you're in a good spot. You're in a good Thanks. spot. So, um, so one of the things I want to talk to you, we talked a little bit on the break, um, was that there's got to be at least a story or two that you tell about Prince, just like a little personal thing that maybe happened between the two of you, or even maybe it wasn't. Maybe there were more people in the room. There's people love to hear these funny stories and his sense of humor and just you know. Uh, it, there's got to be stories that you always hear and go, oh, I got to tell you about this time, dot, 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 and you would say. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, though. It's, there's a time, dude, I could just like, you know, it's, it's, all of them are equally as fun. But I'll pull this one out. Um, we really gotten to know each other really good. Me, Johnny, Kip, and Prince, and he like, we're like, we just have so much fun at Paisley Park. To one day, he was like, I have to meet your folks. I, we, I gotta meet your people so we were like cool we'll, we'll make it happen and, and sure enough like they um I, we called him and told him like hey guys um prince wants to meet the whole family like and they were like okay cool we're on our way <laughs> so <laughs> they're country bro so <laughs> they're mad country and, and you're <laughs> you're gonna get it so sure enough they hop on their tour bus of course, they professional singers, too, you know. So they hop on the tour bus, drive from Arkansas all the way up to Minneapolis, Minnesota. <laughs> it's a crazy part, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. It's like, it's like 30 of them. It's like 30 of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think you, the prince is like, I think I was talking about your mother and father, but uh, all right, I guess we'll run we'll we'll with this. <laughs> he, he knew what was coming. He knew it because he'd already heard about him anyway. So okay. Much. So, yeah, they park. They they turn into the um, Paisley Park. They they go to the back dock and park right in next to his buses with their <laughs> bus. They hop out and <laughs> they walk in, and you know you know when they're there because you can hear them like they're like thirty miles away. You can hear them all talking. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all in the kitchen. In, in the kitchen area, in the dining room kitchen area. And he's, like, excited. He's got, like, food there. And, you know, he's, like, because, you know, he knew my folks were coming in, so he, like, ordered out, you know. And, of course, he's vegetarian, so. Yo, he's yeah. got some great food there. For those of you who haven't been to Paisley Park, even though it's a vegetarian menu, it is a, it's it's, it's nice. It's nice. Yeah. Insane. So we get, we're, I'm already in the kitchen. My, I hear my folks come walking up. He's in the kitchen. I mean, in the dining room area. And everyone's just kind of, I'm looking at TV. They come walking in, like 30 of them. And <laughs> my Aunt Judy, she's like the spokesperson for like my parents, my folks, my, you know, just the whole gospel thing. <laughs> she's the forefront. She's the face of the thing. So they kind of come in like a V. <laughs> <laughs> With her in front, right? <laughs> Hopefully I can re- you know what? I would love to redo it. You know, the, 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 the basketball thing. I would love to do it with my folks. <laughs> it would be insane because here's what he's standing there, he's looking at him, and he was like, "You're, you're right, this is Francis, my folks." And he was like, "Hi." And he was like, "Hi." And my aunt Judy <laughs> has her pocketbook on her arm. She walks up to him, takes her hand. Her left hand, I gotta visualize this and make it really cool. <laughs> her left hand over to his right hand, his right hand, sho- his right shoulder, right. pulls him forward, right? So he does like this. 
right? Right. He turns. So, <laughs> so when he does that, she looks over his shoulder at his butt. <laughs> and then, <laughs> look, and then, look, and then she takes his shoulder, she puts it back, and then she look, turns around to the rest of the family and goes, yep, yeah, that's him. <laughs> It was a moment, dude. Oh, Everybody my God. Loved it. Everyone loved it. <laughs> but then he turned around, and he looked at us, and he was like, okay, now I understand why you guys are so crazy. <laughs> you go. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's play Let's play one more track off of this album, uh, Don't Wanna. Give me a little bit of a background on this song. Um, um, it was recorded by me here at the studio. Um it was a really co- awesome melody. I was like, oh, let me drop, let me get this out really quick. And I, me and Tania have become like really good friends. Um, she was in Texas and I was like, Tania, you need to write the lyrics to this because I have too many other things to do. So she was like, okay, cool. So I think it maybe took her a little bit too long. Um, creativity hit. I finished other stuff. I went upstairs back into the studio and I just stood in front of the microphone, turned Don't Water On and just started singing words. And it just started coming out like water. And I was like, whoa, this is insane. Um, immediately, once I did that, I already, my first verse was done. So I called to me, told her, look, e- I'm emailing you something. You have to check this out. Write your second verse. Let's make this hot. She writes her second verse. Boom. There you have it. Don't want it. All right. Well, let's check it out right here on Funked Up. It's Don't Wanna from Duane Elliott's. Debut album, right? This is the first one. This is the first one, man. First one, New Age, New Day. Again, the song's called Don't Wanna, and here it is right here on Fucked Up.
And that was Don't Wanna. See, this is what I was talking about with the speakers. <laughs> that was Don't Wanna from New Age, New Day, the new album from Duwan Elliott. And I know we, we, we got, you know, we got a limited amount of time. We got we to gotta cut out here in just a few minutes. But, man, thank you so much for hanging out, man. I, you oh, know. Course. So, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about, um, you know, this album that's been out for a few months now. And, um, you know, you you were telling me earlier, you can get it anywhere. You can get it on iTunes. You can get it on Amazon. You can get the it. The Recosto. The Recosto. You can get it on the Recosto. <laughs> yeah. If you yeah. want to buy a new album, you can go to the Recosto. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and it's there so you, it's actually on sale at electric fetus matter of fact yeah 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 Yeah, that's pretty cool so you got you got wait a minute, you got vinyl pressed or is it just the cds that's an electric fetus you know what we were actually thinking about doing vinyl but i think we're going to save it for like the next record the next EP. but uh, i would love to do that maybe yeah. we'll do that who knows yeah vinyl is expensive because you it's if you go and do limited pressing so it, it's yeah it's, you gotta build up the vinyl right right exactly <laughs> exactly yeah. well Brother, thank you so much for taking time out of your day, man. Everybody that's out there, you guys need to go out and you, you know, you you talk. I hear you guys talk about how you want to support the NPG fam, and here is an opportunity to do it because Nuan Elliott has got a brand new album out called New Age, New Day. You can head out to iTunes, you can head out to Amazon. If you're in Minneapolis, you can go to the Recosto at Electric Fetus and probably a bunch of other places. And you can find that CD anywhere. You need to go and pick it up. And uh, and that's that's really all there is to say about it. You need to put your money where your mouth is because the music is out there, and you have to support these artists if you want them to keep on making music. You guys want to hear new stuff? You got to go out there and buy it so they can continue making it. This is their job. This is how they get supported. So go out there and support them. And uh, Nuan, brother, thank you so much for taking time out of your day and hanging with us, man. Dude, thanks for having me, man. Thanks for all the love, you guys. Uh, make sure to stay tuned to this little purple outcast. Um, <laughs> we're coming at you guys with more music here real soon. Um, yeah, new shows and tours coming up here in D.C. And then we're going to head out to the East Coast. So, yeah, dude, thanks for everything, bro. Thanks for everything. We love you, man. Well, You're awesome. Well, I definitely appreciate it. And let's go ahead and uh, we're going to break into a little bit of uh, other music here on uh, yeah. Funked Up. So, don't go anywhere, guys. Uh, we got lots of great music. If you have any requests, you know where to send them to. And uh, Duan Elliott, once again, talk to you later, brother. Thanks, bro.